Welcome back. Today we are continuing on our joyous journey to get excellent marks for paper 2 and we are going to discuss the doll's house. Not far to go grade 12s, then you are done. So hang in there and join me. Let's do a quick summary. A doll's house arrives at the Bennell home as a gift from old Mrs. Hayes. The Bennells have three daughters, Isabel, the eldest, Lottie in the middle, we don't see a lot of her, and Kezia, the youngest. When the doll's house arrives, it smells very strongly of paint. Aunt Beryl actually thinks that it could make someone sick. The girls obviously do not mind the smell because they are absolutely delighted by the house. Kezia, the youngest, notices a small lamp. She thinks it is the best part of the doll's house. The next morning, the Bennell girls could not wait to boast to the other girls at school and Isabel forbids her sisters from saying anything. She wants to be the one to describe the house because she's the eldest. She has certain rights. She reminds her sisters that she is to choose which two girls will visit first to see the house. At playtime, all the little girls gather to hear Isabel's talk about the house. Only Lil and Elsa Kelvy, the daughters of the village washerwoman and a jailbird, according to village gossip, stand apart. Catherine Mansfield says they hovered at the edge of the group of girls. They are the poorest girls at school. Many children, including the Bernals, are not allowed to talk to them. So the Kelvies can only eavesdrop as Isabel proudly describes the doll's house to the other girls. Kezia reminds Isabel to not forget about the little lamp, though no one else seems to care about the little lamp. Isabel then chooses Emmy Cole and Lena Logan as the first two girls to come see the house. Kezia asks her mother if she can invite the Kelvies to see the doll's house and Mrs. Bernal flatly refuses. Why does she refuse? Because the Kelvies are very poor and the community doesn't like them and they are therefore ostracized. As the days pass, more and more girls see the house. Everyone except the Kelvies has later seen the house. At school, the other girls cruelly insult the Kelvy sisters and Lil and Elsa only keep quiet. Later one afternoon, Kezia is at home swinging on the big white gates of the family's courtyard and she spots the Kelvies walking down the road. She decides to open the gates and she invites them inside to see the doll's house. Lil shakes her head, no, no, no. She reminds Kezia that she, Kezia, is not supposed to talk to them. But Kezia assures Lil that it doesn't matter. Lil still doesn't want to go. But Elsa, standing behind her sister, tugs on her dress and looks at her pleadingly. Lil then accepts Kezia's invitation and she leads the Kelvies inside. Aunt Beryl spots them and she shouts furiously at Kezia. She shoes the Kelvies away and she slams the doll's house shut. The Kelvies run off, sit by the side of the road. Elsa, she smiles, and for the first time in the story, she speaks. Remember that the title is very important in every short story. In this short story, the title is a symbol of the Bernal family's societal position. They are obviously upper class, and the narrator suggests that the Bernals are different from the other families because they are the only ones who have a doll's house. Everybody is so excited to come look at it. Mrs. Bernal only sends her children to the local school because there is no good school available for their social class in the area. But the smell of paint from the doll's house, which is strong enough to make anyone seriously ill, according to Aunt Beryl, symbolizes the Bernal's social prejudice. Belonging to a high social class does not necessarily make you a nice person. The narrator, or point of view from which the story is told, is a third person narrator. That means the narrator is an outsider, not a character in the story. And there we have how the story is told. If you have watched the previous videos, you will know about the plot diagram, which we also call the Friday experiment. So how is the story told? Setting. It's a small village in New Zealand. 
And there we see where New Zealand is situated on the world map. Remember that setting involves time and place. So if you have to explain the setting of a certain extract, you have to explain place that that action takes place and the time that it takes place. The exposition is the introduction to the short story. And in the doll's house, it is when the doll's house arrives at the Benells from Mrs. Hay. The girls are very happy. Obviously, we see that in their reaction to the doll's house. And they cannot wait to show off their doll's house to the other girls in the school. Then the rising action is when every girl at school wants to come to admire the doll's house. And all the girls are welcome, except the Kelvies. Why? As we said in the summary, because they are poor and everybody discriminates against them. And then the girls are very nasty to the Kelvies one day. Climax of the short story is when Kezia invites the Kelvies in to see the doll's house, although she knows that she's not supposed to. Aunt Beryl sees them, she scolds Kezia, and she chases the Kelvies from the Bernal property very cruelly. Why? As we said, because they are poor, their mother is a washerwoman. Rumor has it that their father is in jail. The falling action, remember we have a third person narrator. And in this case, it is an omniscient narrator because the narrator can read the thoughts of characters. And it is revealed that Aunt Beryl feels better after cruelly scolding the girls because it released the stress that she's been experiencing because of personal problems. Read that last part of the story very carefully. Then the Kelvies sit down to rest. And then the resolution. Lil is upset and embarrassed because of what happened. But Elsa, and the author calls her our Elsa. Elsa Kelvy remembers only the little lamp. And the fact that Kezia and Elsa both love the little lamp is symbolic of hope. There is a chance that this class distinction that so cruelly causes prejudice against lower classes is perhaps on its way out. Characterization. In your question the end of the year, as you have seen in your September paper as well, they always ask a question in which you have to mention two characteristics of characters or you have to mention two ways in which two characters are the same or in which they differ. So Kezia is kind and obedient. She asks her mother for permission to let the Kelvies come and see the doll's house. She's also independent and thoughtful. Everyone else ignores or mocks Lil and Elsa Kelvy, but Kezia wants to invite them to come see the doll's house. She ignores the class rules by offering kindness and friendship to the Kelvies. Isabel, the eldest sister, is bossy. She wants to be the first to brag about the doll's house to the other girls at school. She's also a snob. She looks down on people seen as a lower class than herself. Lil is loving and caring. She always protects her little sister. She is shy. Another word for shy is timid and self-conscious. She doesn't join in the girls' chat and play at school. Instead, she chooses to stay off to the side with her sister. And then when Kezia invites them to the courtyard to see the doll's house, at first she refuses because she has a sense of shame. And she fears that what happens is going to happen because she knows they are forbidden to enter the Bernal's house. Elsa Kelvy, shy, quiet, mysterious. She rarely speaks, not even to her sister. Remember, she only tugs on her sister's dress, always holding on to the dress. And when she wants to communicate with her sister, she just tugs. And Lil understands her sister so well. She's a very good listener. She notices that when Isabel describes the doll's house to the other girls, Isia loves the little lamb because she mentions it specifically. Aunt Beryl is bossy and cruel, which is even more inexcusable in an adult. When she catches Kezia showing the doll's house to Lil and Elsa, she scolds them cruelly. Shoes them away, slams the doll's house closed. Mrs. Bernal, a snob, she thinks she's better than other people. She's very strict with her children. She expects them to follow her instructions and rules. Mrs. Kelvy is a hard-working, committed woman, and she tries her 
best to provide for her children's basic needs. She's humble, working in other people's homes, not minding washing their clothes, and she loves her children. She does the best that she can with her limited resources. The themes of the story. The first one is social class and prejudice. The Benels appear to be the wealthy upper class. Kelvies, largely ignored or avoided by the community because they are so poor. Mrs. Benell has even told Mrs. Kelvy that their children should not speak to each other. How completely unforgivable is that in an adult? When the Benells are given the doll's house, all the girls at school are invited to come see the house except the Kelvies, even when Kezia asks. The Kelvies are considered inferior, as we've said quite a few times so far now. Their father is in prison, allegedly. We don't know that for a fact. Their mother works as a washerwoman for some families. The theme of hope. Kezia represents hope for the future. She is fascinated by the lamp in the doll's house. She invites the Kelvies to see the doll's house, and this shows us that she is unlike the rest of her family. She is not prejudiced against people like the Kelvies. Perhaps she has not developed this nasty, nasty thing called prejudice yet because she's too young to have learned it, or perhaps she doesn't really understand class distinctions yet. She views the Kelvies as her equal. Otherwise, she would never have even thought of inviting them to come see the doll's house. She talks kindly to the Kelvies and she gives them the chance to come and see the doll's house like everybody else. So this shows us that there is hope that with more people like Kezia who do not give in to prejudice, the future might be different. Poverty. The Kelvies obviously are the poverty-stricken characters in the story. The mother works as a washerwoman. Father is in jail. Allegedly, the the family must live from the money she earns washing clothes and their clothes are made from other people's cast-offs, curtains, tablecloths. The wealthy children at school eat mutton sandwiches and cake during break time and the Calvies jam sandwiches wrapped in newspaper. The children are mocked because they are poor. Even the teachers unforgivably have a special smile for the Calvies. The theme of innocence and cruelty. The story focuses mostly on the interaction between the young girls with one another and remember if it's two it's each other but with more than two one another however the girls simply represent the society in which they are being raised their behavior reflects what their parents and elders have taught them class consciousness we all know this and prejudice are passed down from one generation to the next it is learned behavior when the popular girls mock the Kelvies, they are imitating their parents who gossip about the lower class family at lunch emmy whispers very spicy Fully. Little Kelvy is going to be a servant when she grows up. How awful is that? And then we do know the Bennells are not allowed to speak to the Kelvies. Remember that when you have to answer or comment or discuss a theme in a short story, that question usually counts three marks. You'll see when we do the discussion. And you have to mention three very distinct and separate points. All of this is so closely tied together. That if you know these notes, you will be able to do this. Read the extract, see what the question says exactly. Analyze that question, underline the words that are important in your question, then you answer. Let's look at style. The style is the way in which the story is written. And nothing in the doll's house is difficult, so the style is simple and straightforward. Symbolism. There are quite a few symbolic items in this story. The first one is the doll's house, which symbolizes that the Benells are the upper class. Remember we said they are the only family with a doll's house in town. So having a doll's house sets them apart part from the rest of the community. We also said that the Benell children are only sent to the local school because there is no other school available. This shows us that their parents, just by considering sending them away to another school, didn't want their children to mix with other social classes in town. 
the smell coming from the doll's house. The doll's house is a symbol, we just said that, of the upper class that looks down upon those less fortunate than themselves. The smell suggests that the attitude of the upper class towards the lower class is not good. The attitude divides the community. The gate on which Kezia is swinging and which she opens for the Kelvies symbolizes the social prejudice that Mrs. Bernal and others have towards the Kelvies. The gate is literally a division between the classes. And what does Kezia do? She opens the gate. She removes the social prejudice so that Lil and Elsa can be treated like the other girls in the short story. So here we see that there is a distinct possibility that children like Lil and Elsa may have equal opportunities and thus be considered as the equals of other privileged children. And the little lamp, this question has been asked a few times, the little lamp symbolizes hope. Why? Because a lamp is a source of light. So there is a ray of hope that one day all the elements of class distinction and social prejudice will be broken. So one day people may be warm towards one another irrespective of their social circumstances. Light can also permeate through the smallest of crevices to dispel darkness and to bring warmth. Only Kezia and Elsa seem to be impressed by the lamp. And the story ends in a very interesting way. Elsa appears to be completely unaffected by Aunt Beryl's cruel scolding. Only thing she says is, I seen the little lamp, which means that she and Kezia symbolize hope. And this little lamp then connects Elsa and Kezia because it symbolizes tearing down class barriers that definitely exist between them. The fact that both of them consider the little lamp as the most beautiful thing in the doll's house make them equals. So, figuratively, the little lamp gives hope that class barriers will be broken down. Diction, figures of speech. Remember, diction is word usage. There are quite a few similes. For example, on page 88, the door gleaming with yellow varnish was like a little slab of toffee. Just like a slab of toffee is caramel colored and rectangular, the door of the doll's house has caramel colored varnish painted on it and it is rectangular. Also on page 90, our Elsa wore a long white dress rather like a nightgown. So just like a nightgown in those days was white, long and loose fitting, Elsa's dress is long, white and loose fitting and obviously this makes her an object of ridicule among her peers because only she wears a dress looking like a nightgown during the daytime. Page 93 when Aunt Beryl chases the Kelvies away, the author says she shooed them out as if they were chickens. In the same way that one chases chickens into or out of their coop by using arm movements to encourage them to move, Aunt Beryl chases the Kelvy girls out of the courtyard, which obviously shows her extreme disrespect for them. Page 93, while they walk into the courtyard to go look at the doll's house, like two stray cats they followed across the courtyard. The writer compares the two Kelvy girls to stray cats because of their circumstances. They are poor, often treated as outcasts. Just like stray cats would be skittish in strange surroundings, the Kelvies are tense going into the courtyard because they had not been invited in the same way as the other girls have. Page 93, Lil huddling like her mother. In the same way that Lil's mother is always walking bent over, beaten by life or embarrassed because people are mean and looking down on her, Lil now walks bent over as if curling into herself because she has been chased away so cruelly by Aunt Beryl. The fact that Lil is the self-conscious one and that she is embarrassed during break time and that she consciously stays out of the circle of girls show us that she is older than our Elsa and that she realizes that they are being deliberately excluded by the other girls. Elsa doesn't talk but she doesn't give the same appearance of self-consciousness that Lil does. Metaphors, remember a metaphor is an indirect comparison, not she was like a tiny wishbone, 
the author says she was a tiny wishbone of a child and you explain it in the same way as a simile just like a wishbone is thin and extremely breakable Elsa is thin and very vulnerable the author also calls Elsa a little white owl Elsa is wearing a white dress and she has the same ability as an owl to see everything because she notices Kezia's preoccupation with a lamp, remember? She's also shy and tries not to be noticed, just like an owl, which is a nocturnal animal. Nocturnal, they only come out at night. They hurry away, burning with shame after Aunt Beryl has chased them away. They are obviously not literally burning, but because of the humiliation at the hands of Aunt Beryl, it feels as if their emotions are overwhelming and burning inside them. Aunt Beryl feeling very pleased with herself because she had frightened those two little rats of Keldies. They are not literally rats. Aunt Beryl is comparing the two Kelby girls to little rats because she's mean. One does not compare people to rats. And the Kelvies are also skittish and they try to remain unobtrusive like rats do. Rats try to stay out of sight. Irony. I told told my grade 12s the other day that when you have to explain irony, try to use the word yet in your answer. Because irony is when you expect something to happen in one way and it happens in another. So if you use the word yet, do you spell it correctly? Y-E-T. It's not a jet, J-E-T. If you use the word yet, you show the examiner that you know the opposite is true. Aunt Beryl refers to Kezia as a wicked, disobedient little girl. Yet, you see the word yet? She is the wicked one in how she treated the Kelby girls and Kezia as well. The tone, if you've seen the other videos, it is the general character or attitude of a piece of writing, a character or the writer or the poet. So in this short story, there is a mean, scornful, harsh tone when the girls say the hateful things to the Kelvies during break time and when Aunt Beryl chases Elsa and Lil from the Burnell home. There's also a hopeful tone as we have said. Kezia and Elsa notice the little lamp or the light in the doll's house which then symbolizes hope. Kezia invites the Kelvy girls to come and see the doll's house and she sees beyond their class difference and believes that children from different classes can live in harmony harmony with each other. If you have seen the other videos, you will know exactly what mood is and I will link one of those videos for you in the end screen. So it is the state of mind or feeling that the tone engenders in the reader and we feel all these emotions sad when the Kelvies are being treated so inhumanely. So there's a mood of sadness, people are uncaring, cold, desperate. We also feel sympathetic towards the Calvies, but we also feel optimistic that there might be a different outcome in future. And here we have examples of the level four and five questions that have been asked in previous exam papers. The first one, briefly discuss the theme of class distinction as it appears in this extract. Now remember, we spoke about this. These are notes that you have in your study guide. These are concepts that I have now explained to you. So you should be able to do this question brilliantly. So you say the Bernal family, with the exception of Kezia, consider themselves better or above others. When the children received the dollhouse, they were given permission to invite friends to view it, but specifically told not the Kelvies. Otherwise, the girls would probably have invited them and Kezia would not have had to ask permission to invite them. So when she asks, she doesn't get her mother's permission to invite the Kelvies because of their lower class status. Mrs. Bernal has specifically told Mrs. Kelvey that the children are not supposed to talk to each other. Mrs. Kelvey is a working class woman. She cleans the homes of well-off people and according to neighborhood legend, gossip, Mr. Kelvey is in jail. The Kelveys are poor as we've said. Mrs. Kelvey collects pieces of cast offs from people she works for and she makes dresses for her children. Now you will see in this question that you cannot only discuss one specific class. If you want full marks for this question, you discuss both 
We discuss the rich people, the Burnells, and you discuss the poor people, the Kelvies. Another level five question in a previous exam paper is Kezia Burnell a sympathetic character? Discuss your view. Obviously, first of all, you must know what sympathetic means. So if you think that she is sympathetic, you're going to say yes. You don't get a mark for yes, but you have to state your viewpoint. Then you will motivate this by saying Kezia is innocent. She ignores her mother's instructions and invites the poor girls to see the doll's house because she doesn't buy into the class distinction. She is gentler, kinder and more sensitive than her sisters or their friends and she takes risks for the benefit of the poor girls. If you think she is not a sympathetic character you will say no and then you will motivate by saying she tries to focus all the attention on herself. I do not agree with this viewpoint but some of you may. She wants to experience authority and popularity like a sister even if it is from those who are not accepted in their social circles. She's disobedient. She ignores the instructions of her mother. Another question, in your opinion, do the Kelvies contribute to the way in which they are treated by others? Discuss your view. Now, this might be quite a hot topic of debate. If you say yes, they contribute to the way that other people treat them. You will say they aren't assertive enough. They do not challenge those who are condescending towards them and their body language always hanging back, Lil bending down into herself. Their body language suggests that they accept the harsh treatment of people towards them. Mrs. Kelvy dresses her children in a manner that makes them appear ridiculous, which opens them up for teasing. If you say no, they do not contribute towards the way that people treat them. You will say no one deserves to be treated in the manner that the girls are treated, irrespective of their social standing. And the prejudice against the girls can never be condoned. Or you can say it is not the Kelvies' fault that they are poor. The fact that they are poor doesn't mean that they are inferior to other members of the community. Another example, in this short story, Kezia represents hope against social prejudice discuss your view. If you agree with this statement, you will say yes, and then you say Kezia is not prejudiced. She regards the Kelvies as equal, as we have said numerous times now. She is kind towards the Kelvies and doesn't humiliate them like the other girls do. She talks kindly to them and gives them the opportunity to see everything inside the doll's house, just like the other girls did. She challenges class distinctions by going against her mother's wishes to refrain from talking to the Kelvies. If you say no, she does not represent hope. We would have said she's too young to understand why the Kelvies are considered to be of a lower class. So if she does not understand the way that they are treated, if she does not see that it's different, then she cannot represent hope. She is innocent or young and she has not been influenced by society or peer pressure. She will not be able to continue disobeying her parents by associating with the Kelvies. As she grows up, she will learn by example and she will just treat the Kelvies like everybody else does. Kezia is the only person who disregards class distinction or prejudice and as an individual she cannot make a difference. She's one against many. Next question. Mrs. Kelvey is portrayed as a good mother. Discuss your view. You say yes, she is a good mother. She's hardworking, she loves her family and she takes care of them. She and her family are shunned by the more affluent members of society, but she suffers the humiliation because she wants to provide for her daughters. She's a single parent, as her husband is rumored to be in jail, but still she doesn't abandon her daughters. If you think that she's not a good mother, you could have said she doesn't offend her daughters, although she's never there when they are mistreated. She merely accepts Mrs. Ben Bernal's command, order, instruction that her daughters are not allowed to speak to the Bernal girls and she's the cause that her daughters are mocked because of the clothing that she makes them to wear. Remember, Matrix, if you have to give your opinion or discuss your view, it is better to say yes and no because it shows the examiner that you can see both sides and the chances of getting full marks are so much higher unless you really know the story and you can give enough information in your answer for three marks, then it's not necessary. But to play it safe, to make sure that you get full marks, discuss both viewpoints. The Doll's House is actually a very cleverly written story. Social commentary against prejudice, against the way people treat each other, against the way that children 
treat each other because they follow the examples of adults. Utterly tragic.